Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye, let's repent, even to me, come back to me, repent, with all your heart. Don't come back to me with your brain. It ain't the brains, it ain't. It's your heart. Where your heart is. With fasting. With weeping. And mourning. Rend your heart. And not your car. You know, they're good at tearing their clothes. But then you can go get other clothes. You can buy other clothes. But when you return, you repent with your heart. And you rend your heart. You have got godly sorrow. Because Paul will tell us there's two kinds of repentance. There's a repentance, oh I got caught. <laughs> Boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And then there's, I'm guilty. And I'm sorry. What can I do? And Israel at this point, for the second advent, they've been chased for, for three and a half years by the Antichrist. Because we're coming at the end of the tribulation period. They are in a place prepared. Some think it's, it's self preacher. By God. The tribulation period is God pulling the pants down off Israel and spanking them. What can I do with right? And God don't want a half-hearted repentance. God doesn't want a no-heart repentance. Turn unto the Lord. Alright? Your God. That's Jehovah. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Decide what the Jehovah Witness is. Because we already seen in Revelation 19, Joel 2, 1 through 11, we've seen the return of Jesus in the church. For he is gracious and merciful. That's, those are two attributes Satan does not have. Those are two attributes man doesn't have unless he has an alternative motive. Man is cruel. Look at over the years since the, the instrument, whatever it was that, that Cain killed Abel, a rock, a stick, whatever it was. And we've got the guillotine, we got nuclear missiles, we got guns. We, we got, you know, flamethrowers. We can run you over with a vehicle. Man is cruel. God's slow to anger. Anytime during that 40 years, God could just wipe them out. How long... Did it take with Jeremiah preaching? God said, okay, wait. Okay, wait. All right, Jeremiah, one more time. Jeremiah, don't pray for him, but just give him another chance. How much has God been gracious and merciful, slow to anger to America? And yet the judgment is falling. We've got guns in the schools. Our shelves are empty. We don't have formula. America's all messed up, but we're concerned about the Ukraine. And God's a God of great kindness. God cares for the little children. God cares for the little lions. God cares and tends the funeral of a bird. And repenteth him of the evil. That's not sin. 
What would be the definition of evil? God, God would say, all right, we're done with COVID-19. Turn it off. COVID is an evil. God said, all right, however he would do it, fill the shelves with formula. The, the lack of formula is an evil. It's not sin. Evil is a consequence of sin. And yet, evil is one that words, it can be sin. It was evil for Cain to kill his brother. Now, whether he used a rock or a stick, whatever, that rock or stick, whatever Cain used, that wasn't sin. Who knoweth if he, God, will return to repent? I think, and I, I've heard people say, you know, we're going to have a revival or pray for it. I don't think it's going to happen. Not in America. I don't have that much faith in America. China? Okay, maybe. Russia? Ukraine? Maybe. Africa? Maybe. I don't have that faith in America. I've seen American churches. They don't want to give up their sin. Christians don't want to have anything to do with the Bible. I have seen Chinese take a Bible and hug it and love it and cherish it as it would be their only child. I've heard of people in, in, in countries where God, Jesus, and the Bible are forbidden. And they go underground. And they risk getting caught. You can't even get a Christian today to publicly witness Jesus when you're legal to do it. And the church backs up the coward. I'll just invite him to church. You know, that inviting to church I was thinking about today, that is the next worst thing to Calvinism. See, Calvinism says, well, God's already going to damn you. God's already going to save you. So you don't need to witness in the Calvinism. You're, pre you're predestined by God. And the next worst thing is for a church to say, well, invite them to church. And they die Saturday night. And leave a blessing behind him. God showed countless times in the wilderness for Israel. Moses, I'm, I'm going to kill. I, I'm, Moses, Moses, the inmate mediator between God and Israel and God. Come on, Lord. And with the blessing he left behind, he left quails. The Bible says a flinty rock gave him water. Moses gets angry. That, that's the sin of Moses. He got angry. And rams that rock twice. And God said, speak to him. Lightning did not come down and blow up Moses and little hundred thousand quadrillion pieces. It did not bake Moses. Moses, you're not going to the promised land. And you would think Moses would be the one. What's the mercy and grace of God? I, I don't know how many years it was, but Moses shows up in the promised land with Elijah and the Lord Jesus Christ and Peter, James, and John. And they talk about the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the, the death that's going to follow, making sure that everything has happened in the law, Moses, and in the prophets 
Elijah. And can you imagine that moment when Moses, like, before they go, well, Moses, gets like, see the tribulation period. Okay. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Now what's that? We're going to look at next. You see, in the tribulation period, when you read the book of Revelation and study throughout the 66 books of the Bible, there's going to be no rain. Moses comes along and says, turn whatever water into blood. One third of the trees are destroyed. There are fires, there are earthquakes, there are these bugs or, or, or horse with scorpion tails. There is hail, there is fire, there is there's all kinds of judgment on the earth for seven years. The food is going to be depleted. Whatever food there is, you got to get the mark. There's not much green. Remember Joe chapter 1? So God is going to in. The second advent, we're going to see, and the millennium, he's going to take the curse off the earth. And the blessing of meat offering, the drink offering, look at the meat offering. That's that's not hamburger, that's not deer, that was grain, that was wheat, barley. One of the things that's going to happen with the second advent going to the millennium, we're going to have the early and latter rain, we'll look at that in a moment. And that early and latter rain is going to happen in one month. It's going to bring the crops. It's going to bring the meat offering, the drink offering. The meat offering, the law is in the millennium. As it was in the tribulation period. Before Antichrist stops it. Blow the trumpet in Zion. That's Jerusalem in the millennium. It's funny how... The black people don't have, you know, the Mount Zion church and all that. And their their church is, is anything but about Jesus. It's about political. Matter of fact, I'm quite shocked to learn when I came down to Daytona Beach and moved here. I'm quite shocked to find out that some of the black churches here were actually voting places. Man, you wouldn't have that in Connecticut. You had to go to a and the schools were closed, you, or you would have to go to a, 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 a nursing home facility. Sometimes they had, you know, other than churches. What on earth is a black church, any church, having to do that? You go in there and vote. You can't find voting in the Bible, and then you get that. My eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. He was wearing a blue uniform and shot the southern earth. Released us from the cotton picket and set us in kettles up north. It is true. Put him on the cross. Don't give me that garbage. When that song is sung in churches, I don't sing it. That Zion is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in Jerusalem. Sanctify a fast. In the millennium, there's going to be a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. That's what we're going to do. We're going to gather Israel up. In the millennium, they're going to gather themselves up three times a year. Sanctifying the congregation. Now, you, now, I learned something today. See that word congregation? Have you ever heard a pastor get up in a Baptist ship? Ah, uh, we got a great congregation here. Congregation. Only one time in the New Testament, all the other times in the Old Testament. And much of it, I think it was the book of Numbers. You can check my Facebook link. 
That word congregation, the context of that word is Jewish. Even that one place in Acts. So you get up in, about your Baptist congregation. Are you saying you're Jewish? Are you got the replacement theology? No, no, no. You're taking a Jewish word. This is a dangerous. If, if you got another Bible, that congregation is related to Israel. There's a congregational church that killed the separatists that were standing on the free will of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ alone and the separation of church and state. The congregational church said, you pay your taxes to us. They call that the uh, Anglican church down south. But who would know that? What, what pastor in a pulpit would know that? Assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breasts. Hey, there's a birth. There's a there's a place for today's formula shortage. Let the bridegroom go forth from his chamber and the bride out of her cloth. In other words, what the verse is saying, let everybody come together. Come to God. Let the priest, that's the Levites. Remember, Joel is right into Judah, not Israel. Not the Catholics. The ministers of the Lord. Again, that's a word stolen by some black churches and, and other, you know, were ministers. And most of them don't do nothing for the Lord. Minister is a word of service. Wheat between the porch and the altar. There's the temple, and that's the temple of the millennium. Of course, during the you know, time of Joel, it, the temple is there. Let them say, spare thy people. Well, that's the time of cry of Jeremiah. That's the time of cry of the tribulation. That's the time of the cry of 70 A.D. That's the time of cry of Adolf Hitler. That seems to be the cry of the Jewish people throughout all. O oh Lord. Give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen Gentiles should rule over them. Uh, Babylon, Assyria, Rome, Antichrist. Look at all the ones that ruled over them in the book of Judges. Egypt. You know, it's funny, I don't know exactly how to say it, but, but you know, the Jews in Jesus' time, we would have no men rule over us. So, when it came time that we, under the law, want to persecute, we want to kill Jesus. According to the law, we had to go ask Pilate. You're not under, you're under the authority of your own. Wherefore shall they say among the people, Where is thy God? I bet you the Babylonians were saying that. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, Israel, never Palestine, and pity his people, the Jews. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn, wheat, wine, grapes, oil, olives. You shall be satisfied therewith. This is all millennium. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Now don't say that, says Nehemiah, because they're a reproach among the Romans. 
their reproach among all the world today. That's a millennial inheritance. But I will remove far from you the northern army, Babylon, the Antichrist. I will drive him into a land barren and desolate, Iraq, with his face toward the East Sea, his hinder part, his rear end, toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up. I mean, is that the Battle of Armageddon? The, the, the dead? His ill savor, his smell, shall come up. Because he has done great things. Oh, the tribulation period. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. The lion shall lay down with the lamb, and you know, crops just wonderfully blessed and grown, and no curse, no weeds. I don't know what happens to the bugs. Think about that. I don't think there's going to be any mosquitoes. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. That definitely points. Come on. All right, Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, you know, the beasts don't need to be afraid. Yeah. Can you imagine that moment when, when Ezra f finishes the temple? All right, let's get the lambs and the oxen again for sacrifice. Oh, I'd be afraid. For the pastures of the wilderness, pastures of the wilderness, there are no pastors in the wilderness. A wilderness is a word that means ain't nothing growing here. That's a millennial passage. And you know what the Gentiles have been trying to do? You know, we send money to Israel. We'll get irrigation. We'll plant a tree in the name of, of, of Jesus. We'll plant the name of it. We will cause... The, 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 the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. No, not you. God will. Because that rose of Sharon will have no thorn. For the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Millennium. Above strength in a millennium. Be glad. Ye children of Zion, millennium, rejoice in the Lord, your God, Jesus, Messiah, Jehovah saves, Emmanuel. For he has given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. The former rain is the fall rain. The latter rain is the spring in the first month. Well, the first month is the Passover. Amen. That's not when the former and the latter rain is. One's in the fall and one's in the spring. But God's going to have it rain at the same time, both of them, in the first month, Abed, because the land has been dry. The land is arid. Uh, uh, Normally, this former and latter rain would tell the Jew when to plant and when to harvest. The latter rain will come just before the harvest time. The early rain that came in the fall, that was it. Okay, get ready to plant. The floors, that's the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It's a storage. I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Verse 1. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. Verse 1. 
So this is millennium. And we read to you last night that the second advent in the church, Joel chapter 1, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, those are all plagues of the tribulation period. Those are not the plagues of Egypt. Maybe the, the uh, locusts. And there was a caterpillar. Man, you know it's going to be hard to get food. And what food you're going to have to receive the mark. And there are going to be nations that are going to help the Jew that don't receive the mark with what very, very, very little they have. You see, they're going to help those Jews with food. It ain't going to be a, a, a dinner. It's going to... Something, maybe just even visit the Jew in jail. Jesus said. Now ready? My great army which I sent among Sent. That's past tense. We read that last night. That's us, the church. In the millennium, when all the blessed upon the Jew in, the, in their land, we are amongst them. And Jesus will go so far and Paul will tell us that Christians will gain, some of them, the right to an inheritance of a reign of cities on this earth in the millennium with the Jews, God's people. The church, Jesus' people, Israel, the bride of God, Jehovah, the church, the bride of Jesus Christ. And then the church will say, all are welcome. Friend, if you're not saved, you are not welcome into the church. Because in the moment the trump blows and the rapture happens, if you're not saved, you don't go. I don't care they invited you. you. Imagine, we get halfway up in there. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, you know, they invited me. Oh, get back down. You're not saved. When Jesus Christ comes back, there's going to be no sign in the sky. All are welcome. Uh -huh. That's Satan's lies in the church building of God. And ye shall eat in plenty. That's millennium. As I said in the Middle East, while I'm here on the, in the Holy Land, look for my face to be all broken out with tomatoes. And be satisfied. When have the Jews been totally satisfied throughout history? And praise the name of the Lord your God. They don't even say the name of the Lord God. They don't even spell the name of the Lord God. They put dashes. And they don't call upon the name of Jesus. That, that has dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Oh, that's definitely not after Nehemiah. I guarantee they were ashamed 70 AD. I guarantee they're going to be ashamed in the tribulation period. I guarantee they were ashamed during World War II. And you shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel. That's Jehovah when he was in the tabernacle of Moses. That's Jehovah that, that moved into the house that Solomon built. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, in David's throne. I am, there's that I am, the Lord your God. And none else. Not Allah. Not Estar. Not Tammuz. Not the Queen of Heaven. Not Baal. Not Balaam. Not Astrid. 
not Molech, my people shall never be ashamed. And we're going to stop right there. But we're looking at the millennium. After we just saw the return of Jesus with the church behind Jesus. And there are Christians. You have never opened the book of Job. Shame. 